Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopath. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and I have a small clinic in Milwaukee. This is Oregon, Pacific Northwest. And what I like to do in these videos is show you how easy it is to find your own medicine here in the Pacific Northwest and make it into something useful you can treat your various problems with. Um, this behind me is the ginkgo biloba tree. This is my ginkgo biloba tree back in my my garden. And uh, this is a young one, just been in a couple years. These can get very big. Um, they are very slow growing. It's a beautiful tree. It's a living fossil. These things have been around for 300 million years. It's uh, the last of a genus that used to cover the entire earth. And it's native to China now, and uh, but it, it does grow well in other places, including the Northwest here. Um, some trees can get really old, get to be 500 years old, and there's some suggestions that um, they can withstand pretty adverse conditions and keep going. Um, in any case, traditionally in China, the female nuts, the female trees, make a nut. And this is eaten for food. Um, it's used medicinally as an aphrodisiac and as an immortality aid, supposedly. Although I don't think it's working that well. Everybody seems to still die. But um, it does seem to be very popular. The outer fruits of the female plant's nut is extremely stinky. It's disgusting. It's uh, the vomit fruit. It's smells just like poop, which just really bad. So most of the trees that you'll find out and about are not female trees. People don't want that in their yard, but it, unless you like the nuts, and then it's uh, quite a wonderful stink, I guess. But the nuts, you have to take off the outer coating and just eat the inner nut, and it should be cooked, and it contains some toxins, so in moderation. But uh, what I'm gonna talk about here today is my male tree and the leaf, the leaf of the tree. And most people think of the ginkgo leaf as being used to help cognitive abilities. It's used to help as a preventative and um, to try to slow down Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, for Very good for anything to do with um, decreased blood flow. So decreased blood flow to the brain is definitely a place where ginkgo can help. And it, it actually it improves blood flow all over the body, in the body, the organs, the brain. Um, this really anticoagulant effect, it, it to, can reduce blood clots, it's a blood thinner, it can reduce high blood pressure, it can improve vision, it helps with tinnitus. Um, it can be helpful for things, other things mentally, like uh, dementia because it boosts acetylcholine. No. It's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, so these things can be used to help relieve pain if it's due to inflammation or any kind of stagnant blood. Um, very beneficial to nerve function. It does have some dangerous sides to it. Ginkgo um, shouldn't be used in pregnant women as it can lead to excess bleeding and those with blood clotting disorders or who are on anticoagulants or in a lot of NSAIDs. Um, this can actually cause some pretty serious bleeds. So you really want to talk to somebody like a naturopath or at least a herbally trained medical doctor or, or an herbalist before you um, start combining um, medications with ginkgo biloba. And if you start using regular high doses on a regular basis, um, might not be such a great idea. Start low, be informed, and so let's harvest some of these lovely ginkgo leaves. These are ones that, this is October in the Northwest, and it's one of, arguably one of the best times to harvest ginkgo leaves. For me, it makes a lot of sense because they're about to fall off the tree anyhow, but there's other people that do say that the yellow leaves here are actually the most ideal. Um, I like to get them when they're a little green, but just at that stage where they're getting ready to uh, turn golden. There's some suggestion that it reduces some of the toxicity that might be in the leaf as well. Um, 
as you get a lot of the flavonoids that are later in the season. They've really developed in here, but it's before all the other components have sucked back into the tree at the end of the fall before they fall off. This will just be sticks. It'll all fall off like in a matter of days, probably next week. Um, but before that, I'm gonna grab some of those leaves and we're gonna make a tincture, a nice extract. And <laughs> I've got some crazy dogs running around below me. Let's see if I can, up. Uh, can't really get them. So when I pick from a tree, I don't want to strip everything from the tree. I want to leave some nutrition to, for this tree to suck back up. And I don't want it to look ugly either. This is my backyard view right off my patio. So I'm going to selectively harvest. Let's let you all do that too. Just take little clumps here and there. Don't pinch off the tips. Don't stress out too much. If you pinch a tip or two, it will stimulate new growth. But being that this is a fairly small plant, I'm not, uh, not going to take off a lot of the branches this time. said that the yellow leaves are really great for tea. The green leaves are very bitter, kind of astringent tasting. I don't use the tea that much. Mainly I use this more in a tincture form, sometimes as a powder. Capsules. But mostly I use it as a tincture that I add in formulas. Seems to be really synergistic with a variety of things. Watch out for spiders! <laughs> There's a couple hanging right off my basket. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's take this back into the kitchen and make it into medicine.
Okay, so we're going to put these leaves of the ginkgo biloba into the colander. And we're going to give it a good spray down. I know some birds like to sit in that tree. It's not too far from my bird feeder. Also, I did see a number of spiders in there when I was picking these leaves, so I'm going to just torture those spiders with a little bit of water torture. Um, they're probably perfectly edible, but I do like to prefer that those little guys go down the drain. Okay, that done. We are going to blend these this time. Ginkgo leaves are pretty firm. They're not that fun to cut. So I actually just like to cheat and let the blender just macerate down these rather thick, leathery little leaves. Save myself the effort. And also I like the product at the end. I like it to be a little, little kind of, have a lot of that ginkgo kind of milkiness in it because of the way you do it with the blender. It definitely breaks this stuff down into much smaller particles than you would ever cut it down into. And I kind of like that in some cases. In this case, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so basically, we've got 80 proof vodka. I'm going to pour that into my blender. Probably enough, we'll see. I'll add more if I have to. Let's go ahead and chop that in a pulse fashion. Okay, this looks like a pretty good consistency. It's fairly chunky still. Uh, I don't didn't need to puree it all the way down or anything like that. But I did want to chop those rather tough leaves up. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer that into the jar. It's okay to leave a few full leaves in. I'll probably do another batch, fill this jar up a bit more, get it right up to the surface, clean the rim, put the lid on. Here you have your ginkgo tincture. You want to let this sit um, probably a couple months, tip it um, daily or weekly or fairly often. That'll help get the extraction of those delicious, well not delicious, but in this case better and rather astringent uh, plant compounds out and that will be your ginkgo tincture. Enjoy your medicine. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.